watch him to every Wednesday. <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. I'm connected with y'all on Amazon. Amazon is live. Welcome y'all from Amazon as well. Y'all are coming through on the YouTube channel, the main channel over at bringyourworth.tv. Y'all are coming through on LinkedIn over on my LinkedIn page. Y'all are coming through on all these other channels, including Amazon. Shout out to y'all on Amazon Live. All the products and things I'm talking about, you can click below. And y'all that are ironically connecting with me through social media platforms, where if you saw the thumbnail, we're talking about leaving social media platforms. We'll talk about that beautiful conundrum and uh, uh, dual thinking that's required nowadays to run a business, to con stay connected with our friends, family, the people that we love, and also to have good mental health and not be on social media all the time. This is Bring Your Worst Show coming to you every Wednesday and Sunday at 1.11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free at the links below. The main channel, again, is over on YouTube, YouTube slash Brown Damon, which YouTube.com slash Brown Damon. But you can just click on uh, bringyourwork.tv. It'll bring you there. If you're on Amazon, you will catch my live shows every Wednesday. You just click the follow button over here, over here, like a cheerleader now. It's somewhere around here. You'll see the follow button. You can click on there. That's your equivalent of a subscribe. Listen, y'all. Next week. Exclusive. Sound like DJ Clue if you get that hint. Or get that get that get that reference give a shout in the comments like dj clue this is dropping it's dropping like it's hot next week the complete bring your worth collection arrives on all the shelves including your shelves if you want it all the links are below you can check it out this is your last window to pre-order so you can get a copy and have a copy pretty much from day one you can also get signed copies from me and today at bookshop.org, shout out to the independent uh, publishers. I'm an independent publisher, as well as to the independent bookstores. Bookshop.org, the home, main home, I can tell, for the major independent bookstores here in America, and I believe in North America, they're doing free shipping today. So if you want to go ahead and get your free shipping on, and you want to support an indie publisher like myself, and you want to support the indie uh, bookstores, it's like triple word score. Get it done today. I think it ends at midnight today. I want to say Eastern time, but go and check it out. All the links are below. Just go to bookshop.org or again, click the links below. If you're on Amazon, you go to bringyourworth.tv and catch this episode. You'll see the links on there as well. Speaking of next week, man, we're going old school today or next week. We're going old school. Live listening party. Listening party for the complete Bring Your Worth collection. The audio book is being mastered as we speak. It's already hit some of the shelves, hint, hint. So you might see some stuff popping up soon, but it's all coming out and all will be available by next Friday. Next Wednesday, October 18th, 2023, I'll be having a live listening party for the audio book. Complete Bring Your Worth collection as it implies, is my complete works as far as business books done through my input, imprint, not input, also my input, imprint, bring your worth. As you can tell by the back cover, it is The Ultimate Bites as Entrepreneur, which y'all made a bestseller. Again, I can't thank y'all enough. This really started that journey. Bring your worth, that eponymous, eponymous title of the show and build from now, probably the work I'm most proud of. And um, I think, in retrospect, has made the biggest impact on you, the side hustlers, the solopreneurs, other folks that I've been working hard to serve. It's all in there. The live listening next week, man, I love the, I'm from the hip hop generation, shout out to hip hop, being ARPH now, you see the musician over here behind me. So I love that lineage and that history there. And I'll talk about this more during the live listening next week. But I, I come from an era where something new came out and then the radio broadcasters, you know, back when people used to listen to radio a lot more or, um, you know, the uh, folks on TV, if it was like a bootleg show or whatever, they would play the music. They would play usually music, but they would play other things and have live reactions. Those are really popular here on YouTube. But 
we often don't see that because everyone gets things at the exact same time. I want to kind of bring some of that spirit back. So it's going to be the complete audiobook. There's some bonus stuff that's on the audiobook that will not be presented live because you got to have some good stuff in there to go and get it. And there's some bonus keynotes and other things that don't quite fit well anyway with our show setup. But we're talking about the audiobook from start to finish as far as the actual book content. And I'm going to be giving some behind the scenes stories, um, some of the stuff that's evolved since the first uh, Bites is Entrepreneur came out in August of 2016, all the way to Build From Now, which came out about a year and a half ago. All the discussions that came from that, really trying to give context. And of course, the lines will be open. So you guys can come in with your comments, your questions, all those other things related to the content of the book. I'm really excited about it, as you can tell. So I'm like tripping over my words. It'll be exactly a week from now. I think the audiobook is about, I think the finalized audiobook is about five or six hours. So it'll be like a five or six hour program. So feel free to jump in, catch some of the book. If you're really dedicated, go and catch all the book. And of course, all of it will be available on replay over at bringyourworth.tv. All right, let's get into today. I'm excited about today. If you've been following my work, if you know me personally, if you coach with me, you know, there's a big discussion with me, how to quit social media in 2024. Somehow the end got missing, but it's an official title. Trust me. All right. If you're picking up your phone all the time, even if you're on the computer trying to get work done and you're sliding over to your favorite said social media platform, there has to be some type of balance to our productivity and our connection to others. And from some of my experiences, which I'll talk about today, I realized that social media doesn't always connote connection. It doesn't always connote profit. Those, those aren't always connected. And so what I'd like to do is talk about today, first of all, why you might want to leave certain social media platforms. Number two, how you can leave, like literally taking you step by step about how you can leave these social media platforms. <clears throat> Excuse me. And number three, how you can establish yourself outside of social media platforms so you can be more connected to the audience or even your chosen family that, that you want to serve or stay connected with. So the big question I always get, why should I, should I quit social media? By the way, if you have any questions or any feedback, uh, tell me some of your social media stories. If you want to share that with myself and the audience, if any questions or things that you're kind of wrestling with, be sure and throw something in the comments. I found that there's a few reasons why you should consider quitting social media. Now, when I talk about quitting social media, I don't mean like quitting everything. You don't have to do that. What I'm saying is that there's certain platforms that you might have outgrown or frankly might have outgrown you. Maybe there isn't a fit anymore. It's just like, just like any other type of relationship. Even if you're independent like myself, you might have certain clients that you guys just aren't working anymore. I know there's people that I've coached, there's people that have worked with me, the people that I've worked with, vice versa. And sometimes it's like, yeah, this isn't, we're not gelling anymore. And sometimes that's part of growth. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes you get what you need to get out of a particular social platform and you need to move on. So I think there's a few different, few different reasons, specifically three that come to mind as far as why you should leave a social media platform, why you should quit. Number one is the psychological part of it. And so many people talk about this where they're like the toxicity of social media. And um, particularly, you know, unfortunately, there's like, as I record this, and you already know this if you're watching this live, there's at least two wars going on right now, one that just started. And so it's a messy time. But the secret is, and I love history, if you observe your history, it's always a messy time. There's always something going on. You pick a year in the X amount of years that I've been born, uh, since I've been born, when I was born, since I've been born, since you've been born, and there was something messy going on, at least a few things. Some of those things happened before social media, if you're of a certain age, and you know it was still toxic and complicated. The challenge with social media is similar to the challenges that I found as a journalist. I have two degrees in journalism, I used to write for Playboy, the New York Post. I've been in journalism field for a while. And what I found is since I started, I started as a journalist in the 90s. And what started to happen was that the news cycle, as they call it, started to go faster and faster, starting with, with CNN back when I was a kid. And then it kept going faster and faster. So you have something that happens. Again, we've had major stuff that just happened this past week. And I planned this episode for a while. 
So just a major stuff that's happened in the last few days and the amount of information we're getting is rapid. Some of it isn't true. Some of it is angled in a certain way. Some of it is very useful to us. And a lot of it is opinion. And as we get deeper into the social media, even if you're someone that's just saying, I just want to run my business. That's not really a choice anymore. You are involved in some capacity. In fact, there's some people on social media that I saw today that have gotten pushback because they were talking about their particular products, talking about their particular ideas, and it wasn't related to these major things that are happening in the world. So there has to be this strange balance. And sometimes, frankly, it's not fair, but it's kind of the way it is in social media. So everyone's hypersensitive. Everyone has to be hyper thoughtful. And whatever you're trying to say or do has to fit within whatever's happening in this major timeline. As you're working through these different types of things, that takes a lot of energy. And sometimes the toxicity and the intense things that are happening are too much for us psychologically, emotionally, and so forth. That's one of the reasons why I've backed off my social media platforms. Right now, I'm officially on two. So out of all the social media platforms, I'm officially on two. I actually left a few recently, and I'm going to get into my recent decide my decision to leave a couple of the major social media platforms exactly almost exactly a week ago on October 5th. And I have a whole video about it. I'll share that with y'all. My point is that one of the reasons why you might want to leave social media platforms is that it's too much wear and tear on you. And even though you might be focused again on getting your business out there and and building up yourself and serving your community, you are a part of the social mix that's happening in the broader scale. As you work through that, that takes a lot of emotional labor. So you might not want to do that as much. And there might be certain platforms that feel more toxic, toxic to you than other ones. Again, there's a couple of platforms I'm still on. They are less toxic to me. Other platforms, some of them I left literally years ago. And I was like, it's, it's not the time to be on here. And guess what? You can always go back. So the first reason, the reason is psychological. The second one is your return on investment. Quite literally, like there's so many social media platforms that if you're going to connect with the people that you spent time and energy to get, as Seth Godin says, to get the permission from them, to uh, get them to follow you, to subscribe, to like and share, whatever, 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 all that language that we use today in social media as well as in the video world. In so many different, pla so many different platforms, they're, quite, they're like um, throttling and requiring you to pay more to reach this audience that you've actually earned the trust of. Like that's, that's, that's so bizarre to me, even with me having a tech background and I sold my last startup. So I know the Silicon Valley world and all that. I still can't get my brain around that. And some of these platforms have been around for a very long time <laughs> and I still don't get it. So it might be too much of a ratchet, again, to use Seth Godin's word, too much of a ratchet up of what's required for you to reach that audience. And that leads to the third reason why you might want to quit a social media platform is frankly that your audience isn't on there anymore. Um, and for some of the major platforms that I left, when I left them, people were like, are you insane? What is wrong with you? And I was like, no, my people aren't on there. The people I want to serve, people like you, uh, the solopreneurs, the side hustlers, particularly when I was starting my businesses, including my coaching practice several years ago, me connecting directly just with y'all. It was a conversation between you and I. That's it. It's still that energy, as you can tell. But you know, it was really intense at that time because I really wanted to cultivate connecting with y'all. So if there was a social media platform that was playing around with that, or if y'all weren't really there, why am I spending my time on there? The ROI wasn't there. So I, those are the three reasons why I would suggest leaving a particular social media platform. It's uh, psychologically draining to you. Number two, you're not getting the return on investment because sometimes you need literally need to pay money to connect with the people that you've earned the trust over time with. And number three, the people that you want to connect with aren't actually there. And some of the places that I left, in some cases, I actually ended up making more money because I wasn't wasting the time or money trying to get in front of people on these platforms where they actually weren't on the platform. So let me know if that makes sense. If you've quit social media re recently, give a drop, drop, give a drop. You can give a drop too. Drop a line in the comments. Let me know. Like, like what are the reasons why you might have quit Facebook or Twitter or whatever the case may be, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever, you know, whatever you might be into right now. Why were you like, you know what? This is not the place to, for me. Love to hear your comments. All right. As I hinted at, 
October 5th of, la- of last year. Felt like last year. Last week. It was just, just under a week ago. Last Thursday. I'm recording this on Wednesday. So it was about five days ago, six days ago. I left uh, a few of the major social media platforms. I put in my notice of resignation. I'm like, I'm done. And I break down why I left these platforms. I'm going a little bit deeper here as far as the reasoning behind it in general. But I give very specific um, reasoning in the video, if that makes sense. So I'm talking very broad here. I get extremely specific in the video. The video is three minutes long. So I'm not playing with y'all. It's very specific as far as like, listen, if you feel like you're trapped in a particular social media platform, you're like, Damon, that's where I build up my business. Damon, it's how I stay connected with my family. Damon, this, like, I respect it. I understand that. I went through a lot of that as I've left these platforms. This video answers that again in three minutes. It shows you how you can do that. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the technical, though, or the tactical, as far as literally how you leave it. But we'll get into that in a second. Stay tuned for that. My favorite book on this subject, you're like, Damon, email. Cal Newport's A World Without Email. He talks about email. This came out right when the pandemic happened. And so it was this time where we were reevaluating the time we were spending with technology. Um, My kids were even more little. And my wife and I were struggling to figure out how much screen time they should have. Because, again, we're inside 24-7. <laughs> we just uh, occasionally would go out in our hazmat suits, get groceries, and come back home. But other than that, we're in our home 20 hours a day. And so balancing those, th- those things out. He also has little kids. His kids are, I think, a little bit younger than mine. But also, I think he also has two boys. I digress. The stuff that he talks about doesn't just apply to email. It applies to as we went into this new world post-pandemic or the beginning of the pandemic and ideally getting into a post-pandemic world. How are we going to have this relationship with technology? He happens to talk about email because the email history is rich. And we actually, as he talks about, we actually use less email today than we did before, partially because of social media. So email, which... I don't want to say email is about 30 years old. I've read the book in a while. I think I read the book last year. And then I'll get into why I I got into the book so intensely in a second. But the history of email goes back 30, 40 years, even though for us mainstream folks, it might only be 25 years ago with, uh, or maybe 30 years ago now with uh, CompuServe, Prodigy, shout out to AOL. Um, Oh man, all these, all these different services that tech nerds like myself knew about back in the eighties and and early nineties. He does a great evaluation as far as how technology can be used in our lives. I emphasize that it came out, I want to say again, very early 2020, because he worked on this book before the pandemic happened. And so Cal Newport is an excellent author. He's known for the bestseller called Deep Work. He's also known to not be on any single piece of social media. This guy is prolific. I think he does a book every other year, Um, in demand speaker. Regular writer for The New Yorker, which if you're not a journalist or if you're not a reader of that sort, it's a very high caliber publication. So he has this very rich career and he's not on one piece of social media. In fact, he did a TED talk that's pretty popular. I think it's TEDx talk uh, over where he's at. I forget what location he is. It was a local TEDx talk. He killed it as millions of views. He talks about why you shouldn't be on social media. It's fantastic. Really good book to think about your relationship with technology. It really changed mine. One of the reasons why I got Gaga over the book uh, when I got the book is the impact and the um, perspective it has on the long view well beyond um, what we're doing as far as with um, when we're sheltering in place for those two to three years or what we're doing uh, ideally as we get into start to get into a post pandemic world. It goes beyond that and actually gets to the history into the 50s, 60s and 70s as far as that early technology stuff. And I was like, I have to interview him. (laughs) So this is actually one of the first episodes of the show. The show is about three years old now, bringingworth.tv. Again, you can just subscribe or follow below. This is one of my first episodes. I want to say it was like episode 30. It was so early, I don't even have a number on the episode. Like it was maybe episode 40 or something. And uh, Cal gave me like 45 minutes or so of his time. And it was such a great interview. I think you can hear both of our kids in the background (laughs) because both of our kids were very little. And so, you know, my, my youngest hadn't even started kindergarten yet. So it's like, so we had that 
you know, that, that bond of experience as far as real time going through the pandemic, real time trying to be good parents and real try time trying to figure out how technology was impacting us as creators, as speakers, as authors, and also our family. And so it's, I, I really enjoyed the conversation. I'm so glad I was able to share it with you guys. It's one of the earliest conversations I had on the, on this show. And it really exemplifies some of the ideas of why Cal Newport quit, or I think it was never on social media and why I quit the ones that I quit recently. Highly recommend it. Please go and check it out. Again, we're talking about how to quit social media in the upcoming year. It's such an important topic, I think, because how much time we spend on social media is time we're spending not creating, not doing other things. Um, yeah, I know it's been ad nauseum for some, some of y'all because you've heard so much about social media addiction and all those things. But when we're able to put our phone down, we're not worried about the latest gossip or things that are going viral right now. We also have the opportunity to be fully present and personally and professionally disempower in that. Bring Your Worth TV every Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe below. If you're watching and listening on Amazon, you can always click the follow button. All right. Now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes. This is the fun part. How do I quit social media? It's like, Damon, I don't know how. How am I supposed to quit social media? I've built up my, uh, as I talk about in, in the video uh, about me quitting social media. Again, all the links are below or in the chat because I just put it up there. It's like you're building uh, castles of sand. But you don't realize you're building castles of sand. And at any time, that wave can come in and it's a wrap. If you build up your stuff on such and such platform, and suddenly that platform wants to charge you five cents for every time you want to reach another another hundred of your subscribers or viewers or whatever, then you're kind of SOL, as we used to say. What are you going to do? You got to pay up. Fortunately, there are ways that I say 2024 because as of us, what, us doing this live, it's October. We're in the last quarter. Stuff that I'm talking about, depending on how you implement it, you could be free of a social media platform by the end of the year. In my case, I already had myself set up. All I did was decide, oh, yeah, I'm done with these social, these social media platforms. <laughs> and as I do on the video, I share it on the video and I'm about to share with y'all now. I was like, okay, I'm done. But you got to set it up right. You got to set it up in a certain way. So let's go ahead and, and let's get literal with it. Let me make my screen bigger. As y'all know, I had a birthday recently and I swear my eyes know I had a birthday. All right. So <laughs> the first thing we're going to do we're going to do it live is we are going to quit Twitter. And so we want to go to twitter.com slash settings. And then under settings, you're going to find a way to deactivate your account. You're going to put in your password. And once you put in your password, it says deactivate. And then I think Yep, and then the, the video is almost done. I'm going to go ahead and show y'all. I'm going to go ahead and try to put in my, my old name. And I'll forward it past here a little bit. Which doesn't exist anymore. Put in my pass password again. And it's going to ask me to reactivate. See, I'm trying to keep it honest here. Act, I deactivated around midnight on October 6th. I'm sorry, on top, October 5th. So that's what's happening. I'm going to show it to you all one more time. If you go to Twitter slash settings, you go to more. And then settings and support. That's actually a longer way to do it. Under account, it says deactivate your account. And I'll go and let it play through one more time. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to deactivate your account, is that you also can take an extra step under settings and almost all the social media platforms, you can actually click on, um, on your history and they will give you your history in like an HTML form or a zip file. Zip is like a package that's zipped together like a Ziploc or whatever. Zip of all the photos and all those things. If you want to keep all that and preserve it, you can go ahead and get it off there. 
to warn you though, if you know you're going to leave a platform or if you're pretty sure you're going to leave a platform, but you're not quite ready to do it yet, go ahead and get your history off of there. It's called history or your timeline, depending on the platform. And go ahead and stop this because it's going to keep repeating. <laughs> so you can go ahead and, and get it off the platform. Once you download all that, get it proper here. So once you download all that, then you can keep that forever. And so if there's certain photos on Instagram you want to keep, or there's certain, certain photos on Facebook you want to keep, and all those things, a lot of those platforms will allow you to download their stuff. I'm warning about this because, number one, I don't want you to feel like you're going to lose everything. You can literally keep it on your computer, your backup. I have previous episodes talking about how you can organize um, organize your files. Just click it at bringyourwork.tv, and it's about organizing your ideas. That's one episode. And there's a, another one about um, getting organized which was episode probably about two weeks ago that you can check out. It was part of the live episodes that I did all through September. So that's number one, you don't have to lose everything. But then number two is that if you're gonna download that, depending on the platform and some platforms, because they have tech issues, took a little bit longer, I'll leave it at that. It might take up to a week, maybe even a few days for them to send it to you. So what you normally would do was go in there ask for your timeline or for your history, it'll say, great, we're going to co compile it for you and we'll touch base with you when it's done. And usually some platforms that are really on top of it, it'll be within a day. Other platforms might take a few days. Once you do all that, then you're able to go ahead, get it, and you can delete your account. We're going to show the same thing with Instagram. This is the link. And it took a while to find this. <laughs> this is actually the link for Instagram as far as deleting your account. Some of these platforms that I quit, it was like the joint was hitting. I know, surprise. But the joint was hidden. And so I was like, I don't know how am I supposed to do this or do that, do this or do that. So let me go ahead and show that one as well. Again, the link is right here. If you want the more detailed links, and you're on LinkedIn or if you're checking us out on Amazon, just go over to Bring Your Worth that TV. Click on this episode. It's episode uh, 358 about how to quit social media live Q&A. Click on this. All the links are below, okay? And then if you want to get meta about it, and I don't mean Facebook, if you want to get meta about it, you just click the link below, and it'll take you to the appropriate episode. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and show the same thing for Instagram. So it's the link I share right here, right? There's a temporary one, which is the link I show right there, if you want to pause your account for a minute. But then now you see me putting in the permanent one, and then that will actually show you. And then I ask you, you see how old school this is? This is like Instagram, like, I don't know what year this is, but this is literally me on there a week ago. They still haven't updated this. So it's like, all right, you're going to delete your account. Okay, put in your password. And it goes from there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't show my password there. All right, so it, it goes from there, and it says delete Brown Damon. And then this is the important part. And actually, let me pause this. Actually, I think it will show it. There it is. I'm going to pause right here. This is important. Your account will be deleted on November 5th, 2023. Now remember, and if you watch the episode, again, in the links below, all the links are at Brown, uh, Bring Your Worth TV. If you could check out the, the links below of this episode, I have a link where in, I want to say, episode 357, episode right before this one, where I talk about me quitting social media, how you can escape social media in three questions. As I talk about at the beginning of the episode, I deleted these on November, I'm sorry, on October 5th. I'm almost all, on almost all these platforms, at least the major ones, they will actually keep your account active in some capacity for up to 30 days. But that means two things. Number one, your account's active for 30 more days. But then number two, technically, there's some limitations, but technically it's still active. But then number two, that means if you log in at all, and I think it mentions it, yeah, if you change your mind, log back in before then and choose to keep your account. So if you do any type of login, this is super old school. I learned this ages ago. I'm talking about, I think it was around the time I lived in Silicon Valley. Certain platforms like Google, Facebook, um, I think LinkedIn might be one of them. Twitter is definitely one of them. About 10, 15 years ago, again, back when I lived in Silicon Valley, they were trying to be more 
the key or the login for the rest of the internet. That's why there's certain websites that you go to and they say, hey, create an email, give us your email and create a password or use Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, whatever, Google to log in. Once you do that, it taps Google, it taps Facebook, it ta taps whoever, whoever, and then says, hey, we need this information. Can you verify that Damon is, has a Facebook account? Can you verify that Damon has a LinkedIn account? Whatever, whatever. So if you're going to be deleting a social media platform, it's not just a matter of saying, I'm going to follow Damon's steps and delete this particular platform. I'm not going to log in for 30 days. It also means you need to figure out what platforms you've used these particular platforms or these particular uh, social media sites as a key. So if you have, I don't know, an account on a photo website and you happen to use Facebook to log into that photo website because you didn't come up with an original email or orig share your email and come up with original password, then that means you need to go to that particular website, that photo website, and come up with an original email and, and username, whatever, and password that's not connected to your Facebook account. Because if you go into any of these websites that you use your Facebook account to log into within the 30-day period, period, that's the same as you logging back into your Facebook account. And that means it'll reactivate and it'll be like nothing happened. And you got to wait another 30 days. Big warning there. I'm not going to tell you why I know that. <laughs> but it's been a case for Silicon Valley in a while. And I'm happy to share that gem with y'all. All right. So that's deleting Instagram, deleting Twitter. I'm not picking on, on them. I'm just trying to show you the process. I've, I've left a lot of social media platforms. The, the process is very similar across the board. All right. If you have any questions, go ahead and jump down below. Again, what social media platforms have y'all left? You know, what are you guys kind of dealing with as far as thinking about leaving these social media platforms? And what are the steps that y'all took to leave them? If you're leaving, leaving social media platforms, believe it or not, there are actually ways to continue to run your business. And some of y'all, in fact, I know some of y'all personally say, Damon, I can't leave the social media platforms. They are uniquely tied to my business or my clients. I've had breakfast and or strong drinks with some of y'all. And we've talked about this. And sometimes that's just the way it is. If you're struggling with that, you can't necessarily quit a certain platform. One, one uh, service I recommend, highly recommend, is Meet Edgar. I met the founder a while ago. I've worked with them. They're fantastic people. I've actually been a client of theirs for a long time. Here's what Meet Edgar does. You put all your social media posts into Meet Edgar. Like literally, they call it a library. Literally like one post after another, just like you would post it on the social media platform. But you put it in there instead. Put it in the library. Then you set select certain times where you want things to be posted. Then you could also randomize when those things are posted and even have, I think, I don't think there's canned responses, but there's some other dynamic things that they're working on right now, which is really fascinating. I, I like Meet Edgar a lot because for the social media platforms that I'm still on, I can automate the things that I do. I have a com with Inc. Magazine. The link is below. And I've done between five and 600 columns in the past six or seven years. I have this show, the live listening of the complete Bring Your Worth collection. Again, next week, come through on Wednesday, y'all. You've got a treat coming next week. That's going to be the 360th episode. That means by the time next week rolls around, there's going to be 200, sorry, 300, came and count today, 359 additional episodes, including this one that I'm sharing with different people. For me to do that manually is exhausting. But for me to put into Meet Edgar and say, hey, share some of my ink columns. Hey, share some of my episodes. There's even uh, an episode that I did probably about a year and a half ago that's out on social media right now that all these people are commenting on, which I appreciate. All y'all are commenting on, that was episode, again, that came out, was probably episode 150. Came out a half a half a show ago, <laughs> half half a time of half life of the show, but because Meet Edgar put it out there, suddenly there's more traction on this episode again that came out a year and a half ago. So it's an awesome setup. Most of these are referral links. This is one of them. It'll give you a nice little bonus as far as you coming through me 
again, I've worked with them. I like their work a lot. You know, shout out to Laura. She's one of the um, few female founders that I know personally because, again, systemic issues. I want to support as many diverse founders as possible. She's one of them that's killing out there. So shout out to Laura. I love the work that you're doing. A new one that I'm just starting to get into is called Reclaim.ai. And what it does is it actually goes into your calendar, particularly if you have a team, but I'm kind of a team of one. So it works pretty well for me. And you give it information and say, I want to have a couple hours every week where it's just time with me and my parents or me with my kids or me with my home and my friend. And I'll say, okay. And these are the things in your calendar. You can arrange your calendar in this particular way so that you have two hours carved out to do this particular thing that you deem important. Except you can have several things that you deem important and organize your calendar back on that. I think they just launched over the past year. They're relatively new. I'm just getting into them, but it sounds like they had some really interesting stuff happening. If you feel like you're being overwhelmed and social media can be part of the overwhelm, but as you start to get off of social media, you realize you still don't have your stuff together, which might be, I've got off some social media platforms and I'm like, wow, I have more time and I still don't feel organized. Sometimes it's like that. If you're still trying to get your stuff together, be sure and check out reclaim.ai. I'll be using it more in the upcoming months and I'll absolutely keep y'all posted. So if you are looking to quit a social media platform, what's stopping you from quitting? Uh, let me know if the directions or the details are enough. I'm happy to answer any of your questions, any of all of them. I've come back to social media platforms. I've quit a bunch of them. Let me know what your, what your questions are and what's stopping you from quitting. I love to hear below. All right. This is the Bring Your Worst Show coming to you every Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You subscribe below. And the complete Bring Your Worth is coming out next week. Next week. Shout out to y'all that have written with me. There's like six books in here. I'm not exaggerating. Like three of them are on the back. Like this is the complete collection. Be sure and check it out. If you're a fan or if you're just starting to learn about the work that, uh, that I've been doing and the work I've been highlighting of other folks that are helping side hustle and solopreneurs, be sure and check it out. And exactly a week from now, having a live listening party of the audiobook. The book is coming out next week. The audiobook is being mastered literally as we speak. And uh, yeah, I am, I'm excited, as y'all can tell. I also see some of the bags under my eyes because I've been working hard for y'all, <laughs> as I should. All right. Man, these are all number one questions, but this might be the, the number one, number one. How can I make money without social media? Damon, how can I make money? Without social media, I need social media to make money. Social media is how I make money. That's how I connect with my customer. I need it. I need it. Tap it into my veins. I can't see a world without it. Let's break down a few different ways you can connect with people. Let me make sure I get my tech right. <laughs> you know how it is with tech sometimes. Man, wait. I appreciate this comment. I have deactivated, but then after a while, I reactivate. I get FOMO. However, I'm on social media less and less anyway. Yeah. Thank you, uh, LK57. I appreciate that. And I, and I think that's the tough part with, with social media is that we're accustomed to it. And it's, I think it's kind of, that's why I was mentioning the pandemic and other things, because I feel, feel like it kind of got doubled down, you know, a few years ago when we were all sheltering in place, at least most of us in the world were sheltering in place and all that. And it's just like, I really need to connect with people. And so it's a matter of finding unique ways, um, perhaps old school ways to connect with people. And I think that's part of it. One of the things that you can do is, and, and that goes right into the question I'm about to get into right now. It's not only about uh, how can I make money without social media? It's also about how can I connect with people without social media? So thank you for your comment. And the fact that you're on it less and less, I think signals that maybe maybe you are slowly getting out of social media, even though you keep coming back, but it might be kind of that slow, slow, slow leak, as they used to say, excuse me, versus you doing a dramatic exit as I tend to do. <laughs> so thanks for the comment, LQ57. I appreciate that. And that's, that's real talk. 
Like I, I appreciate that for sure. And so some of the ways that you can actually connect with people, and I've talked about this in previous episodes, is number one is of course meeting people in person. And that could be conferences, that could be coffee houses, what have you, whatever precautions or wherever you happen to be, whatever limitations you have, work within those because some of us can't do that. But if possible, connect with people in person, even if it's a mixer event, even if it's a concert, even if it's um, going to a TED talk, find ways to connect with other people. And again, we've had such an intense week this week. Uh, if you're watching the replay, you can you can see the news for for the week of, <laughs> of October 11th. Um, but it's also that reminder of us knowing each other and, and meeting in a certain way. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, so meeting in person and finding finding other ways to to kind of um, build that connection. Another way to do this is to actually find a home that's outside of social media, which a meta again, no Mark Zuckerberg, but a meta way to talk about it is with bringyourwork.tv. And this this show came about in yes yeah, three years, so it came out in December of 2020. And all of us are sheltering in place. I wanted to find a way to connect with y'all because I'm used to going to the tech conferences. I'm used to going to the American Society of Journalists and Authors conferences. I'm used to going to the other conferences. I'm used to speaking. I'm used to having coaching sessions in, per in person because I'm a business coach. Again, my info is below if you want to coach with me. Suddenly, all that stuff got, it was like a tap, just like LQ57 was talking about. Like Suddenly, that all got cut off. Except we're all experiencing that as opposed to one person. And so this show with the 18,000 plus of y'all that have subscribed, it's a chance, again, like LK57 to come through and for us to have a conversation about certain topics that are relevant to social, to uh, side hustlers, to solopreneurs, and, and then just people in general. So this is my way of facilitating that. Another way you can facilitate that, which I'd highly recommend if you're in business, is to do a newsletter. It doesn't have to be a Substack. There's major issues with Substack. You can just Google Substack. You'll see the issues that are coming up, which I think will become more prevalent, especially, again, with the recent happenings. I think it's going to get way more intense before it gets it gets more calm as far as with the Substack crowd. But there are all these other alternatives to you building a newsletter. My favorite, and a lot of this stuff I actually use every day. So I'm not I'm not just talking to talk here with referrals and stuff. It's like, no, these, these are my joints. I'm, I'm opening up the magic bag here. It's ConvertKit. ConvertKit allows you to, I think if you have less than 500 subscribers, you can do it for free or extremely low cost. I have more than that to my newsletter. So I actually pay the premium plan, but it's not even that expensive based on that. Particularly if you use a referral, because I think you get a month or two free. ConvertKit works out really well because it's essentially a newsletter platform. It allows you to connect and email the people that you want to have in your community as you're building the community or if you want to sustain the community. In my case, I have multiple communities. So I have y'all here at bringyourwork.tv. And then of course I have folks at my newsletter at joindamon.me, which there's a Venn diagram of overlap, but it's not always the same. That's why I try to shout out both of the communities as I'm on either one. I like ConvertKit a lot because number one, the founder, Nathan, he has a great ethos as far as being a creator himself. And I'm a couple degrees away from him. And I love his, his ethos and his perspective on things. So I'm not worried about the site suddenly going in different directions in ways that is not creator focused. I am a creator. I support y'all as creators. So I want the brands that I work with to be creator focused so they can serve me and I can serve y'all much better. The second part with ConvertKit is that it's really good as far as putting the people you talk with in your newsletter into different tags or as they call them, buckets. Or actually, I call them buckets. They call them tags. I always get confused because I kind of tend to interchange them. I think they call them tags. And so if there's someone that, in my case, that I met at a keynote that I'm doing, that might be different than someone that I met at the TED conference where I'm an attendee. And that might be different than, different than someone that I happen to meet when I'm grabbing a drink with a friend of mine. Those are three different categories. And so the ConvertKit can allow you to put those folks into different categories. And so if you have particular product offerings, if you have particular messages, forget the money part for a second. If you have particular messages that you want to get out, the folks that I talk to that you know are my people from the TED conference, it might be a different conversation because TED folks, a lot of 
entrepreneurs, a lot of scientists, a little bit more on the techie side, that's going to be different than the conversation I have with the folks from the American Society of Journalists and Authors who are more authors, who are independent freelancers, freelancers, because all freelancers are independent. You know where I'm going, maybe content marketers, that kind of thing. Those might be two separate messages. Uh, ConvertKit allows you to split it into different messages and go from there. So I'd highly recommend it. Um, creating a newsletter or some type of messaging with the people that you serve if you're running a business or with the people that you care about. You know, a tiny letter, I forget the name of the website, but the web, oh, I forgot the actual uh, URL, but another good one is called Tiny Letter. And there's good friends of mine where they'll send a tiny letter, which is just simply an email, which is a picture on the top. They'll send like a postcard, but once a quarter, sometimes they'll send it during the holidays, right during the holiday season. So sometimes they'll send it during the holidays. Like, hey, there's what's happening. What's going on with you? Blah, blah, blah. Um, another one is Marco Polo, where you can send little videos to other people, but it's not a social network. It's just you sending videos to one person or to a small group of people. It's meant to be intimate. That's the pattern with all the stuff that I'm talking about here is that there's a level of intimacy that you can create. My business started to improve drastically when I started to leave the social media platforms one by one because it forced me to create intimacy with the people that I serve. In other words, you. And whether that's me having a TV show two to three times a week, one of them live where I'm talking directly to you through my little camera, or it's the newsletter at joindamon.me that comes out every Wednesday morning, or it's another setup where I do a keynote and a couple hundred of y'all, whatever, come through and we're able to, to talk and then have one-on-ones after the talk. That all creates a level of intimacy that I think social media is really good at pretending to do, but in a lot of cases, the intimacy is not there. And unfortunately, it's a, a law of diminishing returns, as they say in the business world, where back when I got onto the Facebooks, I got onto the Twitters, I got into the, the live journals and the MySpaces, I'd say a couple decades ago, the amount of intimacy that was facilitated was a lot higher. Not because there weren't as many people on there, but because there was less of a intermediary when it came to us connecting with other people. Now it's very much a business, very much corporate, and I don't mean that in a good way. So because of that shift, we need to think about how we're gonna connect with other people. Back to the business. Make profit without social media. I did a live show about a year ago talking about making profit without social media. I recommend you, you check that out. It's a deep dive into how you can actually run a business, start a business. I mean, literally launching a business without social media, 100% possible. You can do that. You can do that. You can make that happen. Even when I launched this show uh, almost exactly three years ago now, I wasn't on most of the social media platforms. And as of to with the show, I've left more platforms than I've gotten on. <laughs> and so there's ways to launch products, launch big ideas, have something successful. 18,000 of y'all have come through in the last three years that are hanging with me. That happened, most of it happened without leaning on social media. Let's talk about it. This live talks about it much deeper. And business without social media is actually... A uh, classic episode, not a live episode, but a traditional episode for a recorded episode where I talk about me leaving one of the major social media platforms. And then I saw my profits go up within the next business quarter. Not a lie, not an exaggeration. I've written books about this. In fact, it's included in uh, the Complete Bring Your Worth collection coming out next week. But this actually solidifies a lot of the stuff I'm talking about. Do not miss this last episode I'm recommending because it gives a good crux um, to the argument that I'm making. And in fact, it, it helps address some of the fears that we have as side hustlers, as solopreneurs, as business people for us to say, I'm going to leave social media. What about my business? This answers that question. Man, thank you all for coming through. And Elke57, uh, thank you for, for your wonderful and honest comment. I appreciate it. This is every Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You subscribe for free. And you can also hit the follow. I think it's called follow. I have to look at my iPad. <laughs> I forget what it's called on Amazon. They keep changing the name. You can click it on there. You'll be catching the live shows. Live shows are every Wednesday. Recorded shows are most Sundays. Get the complete Bring Your Worth collection. 
coming out next week. Click on the link. Like I announced this to y'all months ago. It's here. It's here. It's in my little, not little, it's in my medium sized hands. If you want a copy as soon as possible, hit me up at damonbrown.net. You can get a signed copy from me. Just go to damonbrown.net. If you want to support an indie publisher, me and your indie bookstores, them who are fantastic, go to bookshop.org. They have free shipping today. So if you're watching this live today, they have free shipping. My book's on there. Click the link below. You'll go to my bookshop at bookshop.org. No pun intended. And it has all my books on there, including the new one that's coming out next week. And finally, of course, you can get on Amazon. Check it on Amazon.live. Amazon.live. Amazon.live at Amazon.com. I'm looking right here. It should be highlighted wherever you happen to. Depending on your browser, they're going to stick the book somewhere around here. It's around my big head. Just count on that. And next week, I am geeked. You see me beaming. I used to be a radio DJ, so I'm geeked about having this experience with y'all. Exactly a week from now, 20, not 24 hours, 78 days, 70, I cannot talk today. I need a vacation. Seven days from now, <laughs> you talk about my work into this book. Seven days from now, next Wednesday, October 18th at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time, if I can get out of my mouth. We're going to have a live listening of the complete Bring Your Worth collection, the entire audiobook of this joint entire audiobook of this joint some bonus stuff on the audiobook but it's really meant for audiobook form the books themselves though we're gonna have a live listening party and i'll be giving some background as far as the books um the first book came out in 2016 so you can imagine a lot's happened some of the history behind it um a little bit of the story behind behind how the books happen and of course the lines will be open if you had any questions or comments about any of the books in the series or all the books that are in the collection much love to y'all. This is a fun show. And Elky57 and the rest of y'all, good luck on figuring out how social media plays a part in your life. It's important. If we're going to live a, a life well, we got to think about how well we're living our life. Sounds like a Hallmark card, but it is absolutely true. Until next time, actually in a few days, remember you can bring your worth. You can always build from now. Take care of yourselves.